On your left is an LG C1 OLED. On your right is a Sony A90J OLED with the long-awaited VRR firmware update installed. The swinging pendulum in the NVIDIA app looked buttery smooth and free of tearing on both televisions from where I'm sitting. Even though you may see some tearing or frame drops in this very video clip, since YouTube itself doesn't support VRR. Now, the VRR format supported by Sony's Bravia XR TVs including the A90J Master Series OLED is the open standard HDMI forum VRR but not G-Sync, so you would have to select this option to make VRR work on the television from an RTX 30 series graphics card. Engaging VRR mode on the Sony A90J increased input lag slightly to 21 milliseconds for a 60 frames per second video signal and to 15.5 milliseconds for a 120 fps signal. But please bear in mind that the Leo Botna tester we used to measure input lag only sends out a fixed frame rate, so hopefully the actual latency would be lower in VRR games. Thanks to the presence of a coprocessor in addition to the MediaTek MT5895 SoC, the Sony A90J correctly resolved full 4K 120Hz resolution even in VRR mode. However, Perhaps also due to the coprocessor, the Sony did not manage to reproduce full 444 chroma at 4K 120Hz, unlike the LG which could do so with PC mode engaged. To be fair, this probably won't concern PS5 players, since the console maxes out at 422 chroma resolution anyway when outputting 4K 120Hz due to the PS5's 32 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 bandwidth limitation. Both OLED TVs manifested VRR flicker in certain games at lower frame rates. This is a hardware issue caused by deviations from the factory gamma curve that's optimized for 120Hz and currently affect all WRGB OLED TVs with VRR support. The same deviation is also responsible for raised blacks in VRR mode. And interestingly, Sony seems to be addressing this issue by darkening the EOTF somewhat in VRR mode leading to a slight undertracking of the ST2084PQ standard. When comparing this quantization test pattern from the Display HDR app, native gradation was definitely better on the Sony OLED, and you can even deploy smooth gradation to improve things further, although because the higher settings would result in an artificial, airbrushed appearance, our preferred setting was low or off depending on the game. Now. Some quarters may argue that Sony OLEDs are now the best gaming TV following the VRR firmware update, thanks to their superior gradation and upscaling even in game mode. But there are four key reasons why LG OLED televisions still have the overall upper hand when it comes to gaming, especially in HDR or high dynamic range. But before I list the reasons, I would like to thank HDMI 2.1 cable manufacturer Zeskit for sponsoring this video. The company has released its new XTEC series of HDMI 2.1 cables, which uses a coaxial structure that provides not only improved shielding, but also a slimmer and more flexible cable construction than the Zeskit Maya range I've reviewed before. In fact, I've been using the Zeskit XTEC cables to transmit 4K 100Hz video signals from my next-gen consoles and PC to the LG and Sony OLEDs without any signal loss whatsoever in this comparison video. And these cables have been certified as authentic using the HDMI cable certification app. If you are considering buying a certified HDMI 2.1 cable, which has to be marketed as an ultra-high-speed HDMI cable, Please support this channel by considering buying one from Zeskit. I will leave the purchase link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay, reason number one why LG OLED televisions are superior to Sony OLEDs for gaming is that the logo detection auto dimming on Sony OLED TVs cannot be disabled from the user menu or the service menu. So after playing HDR games for a while, any static element such as the HUD or the scoreboard would cause the entire screen to dim down, robbing the picture of the highest HDR impact. With LG OLED televisions, you can turn off the logo detection auto dimming completely through the service menu. 2. Sony OLED TVs don't support HDIG. The television will perform additional tone mapping on top of the tone mapped output of an HDIG game or console. 
causing HDR games to not look as impactful as on LG OLED TVs with well-implemented HDIG support. Before you ask, yes, you can turn off HDR tone mapping on the Sony OLED to hard clip and simulate HDIG, but unfortunately this would also lower peak brightness, so we are forced to choose between the more accurate gradation preferred or the brighter brightness preferred setting. And even then, neither option can match the HDR impact on the LG OLED powered by HDIG working harmoniously between TV and console. 3. LG OLEDs provide 4 HDMI 2.1 ports for you to connect multiple HDMI 2.1 source devices, such as a PS5, an Xbox Series X, and a gaming PC with RTX 30 series graphics card, whereas on Sony OLEDs, only 2 HDMI 2.1 inputs are available, namely HDMI 3 and HDMI 4, of which HDMI 3 is also the eARC port. And last but not least, it's nearly impossible to enjoy Dolby Vision gaming on Sony OLED TVs. For starters, Dolby Vision and 4K Hz gaming are mutually exclusive on Sony OLEDs, which means that if you want to play games at 4K Hz, you will have to give up Dolby Vision. Even if you are willing to drop down to 4K 60Hz to play games in Dolby Vision, Sony TVs don't provide a game mode in Dolby Vision, so you will have to put up with extremely high input lag, which sours the gaming experience. Not a problem, you say? You'll just play games in HDR10, right? Well, here's the thing. I've compared Dolby Vision Gaming versus HDR10 Gaming extensively side by side, and found that there are specific scenarios where Dolby Vision Gaming can be superior to HDR10, as I've demonstrated in this video here.